Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the instrumentation amplifier. It is an amplification circuit that uses operational amplifiers in such a way that the output voltage is an amplification of a very small difference between two inputs. In other words, it amplifies small differences in the input signals. And what is it used for? For measuring such things as thermocouples or acquisition systems and things like that. Very small changes, very small differences in the input will then have a very large output right here. Of course, depending upon how big your gain is. Here's the equation that describes the output voltage relative to the difference of the two inputs and multiply it times this gain. Now, it depends, of course, how you choose the values for your resistors. Now, how did we come up with this equation right here? Well, let me try to show you. First of all, we're going to define the output of this op amp and the output of this op amp right here. So we have V1 output and V2 output. V1 output is equal to 1 plus the ratio of the feedback resistor, which in this case is R3, divided by the resistor, which is connected through this right here. Notice there's no voltage difference here, to ground. So that would be R4 times the voltage input. V1. And we can say that V2 output is equal to, in the same fashion, is going to be equal to the feedback resistor, which, ah, it's right here. There's our feedback resistor, R3, so we get 1 plus R3 divided by R4 times the input V2. All right, so how can we then relate that to the output voltage there? Well, we're going to do that by assuming that we have a current running from V1 output to V2 output. So the current equals I, and of course, using Ohm's law, we can say that I is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, and the voltage will be the difference between VIO or V1 output and V2 output. So it'll be V1 output minus V2 output divided by the resistance between those two, which would be, mm, let's see here, R4 plus 2 R3. We can also say that the current here between VA and VB can be defined as follows. I is equal to, again, using Ohm's law of V over R, is equal to the difference between the voltages between those two points, and we label them VA and VB. So it would be VA minus VB divided by the resistance between those two, which is R4. Now you may say, well, why did we pick VA, VB? What's the significance here? Well, it turns out that you can see that VA must be equal to V1 and VB must be equal to V2 because there's no voltage difference between the inverting and non-inverting terminals of an ideal operational amplifier. With other words, we can replace VA by V1 and VB by V2. So we can say that I is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by R4. And now we can set these two equations equal to each other. And let's see what we get. So I equals this, I equals that. So we can write that V1 minus V2 divided by R4 is equal to V1 output minus V2 output divided by R4 plus 2 R3. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for V1 output minus V output relative to V1 and V2 because after all, V1 output and V2 output are the inputs to the third operational amplifier. All right, let's see what we get. So we can write that V1 output minus V2 output is equal to, putting this over here, turning the equation around, we get the quantity R4 plus 2 R3 divided by R4, multiply times, that would then be V1 minus V2. And of course, if we divide this into the numerator, this is equal to the quantity 1 plus 2 R3 over R4 times V1 minus V2. Now, if you take a look at this, and you take a look at our end result, you can see that we're beginning to get close to what we're looking for. We still have these inverted, but that's okay. We'll, take about, we'll worry about that later, but we at least have this part right here. Now, the next step is to find V output relative to these two V inputs. V1 output and V2 input output become the inputs to the third op amp. 
So we can say that V output is equal to the ratio of the feedback resistor to the input resistor. That would be the ratio of R2 divided by R1 times the difference between the two inputs, and that would be V2 minus V1. So we get V2 output minus V1 output. And now notice, let's see here, where I have the in the this reversed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace this by the inverse of that, which means I need to inverse this as well. So we can say that the V output is equal to the ratio of R2 over R1 times the inverse of this, which is this quantity right here, or actually I should say that quantity right there with that reversed. So times 1 plus 2R3 over R4 multiplied times, now this becomes V2 minus V1. And that's the exact same equation that we have over here. So that's where that came from, which means that this quantity here is the gain. Now sometimes you can set R2 equal to R1. If we do that, if we deliberately set R2 equals to R1, then the equation reduces to VO equals, the output voltage, is equal to 1 plus 2 times R3 divided by R4, multiplied times the voltage difference on the original inputs, V2 oops, minus V1. And this quantity right here, 1 plus 2 times R3 divided by R4, that's called the gain. So the gain is equal to A is equal to 1 plus 2 times R3 over R4. And so finally, if you want to write it in a more simplistic fashion, you can say that the output voltage is equal to the gain times the difference of V2 minus V1. And that's the what we call the instrumentation amplifier circuit, which allows you to take a very small difference in the input voltages, amplify it quite a bit through a large gain to get an output voltage. And that's how it's done.